There's no question that 2020 has been a unique year. The urgency created by the global pandemic acted as a catalyst to faster executive decision making and action. Leaders everywhere are refocusing their priorities in key areas, spanning everything from strategy right through to culture, in light of the intense work-life shift we have all made. In the Activate Now Stories from 2020 series, we hear from leaders in business and government who share with us their insights into the changes they have made during this pivotal time and consider how the future might play out. Today, I'm delighted to be talking to Nunu Fournier from Banco CTT. So Nunu, how have the events of the past six months changed your perspective? Well, um... This has been a, a really change going on all over the world. Uh, but to be honest, I would say that probably haven't changed that much my perspective. I, I think they have confirmed a lot of trends we uh, saw uh, going on. It has also accelerated those trends um, and just confirming that uh, the world is changing uh, very fast and uh, Adaptability is key. Uh, I think that's the major uh, confirmation. Uh, it's not a change. I, I, I think it's a confirmation of things that were already over there, and now they are clear and they have speed up. And what opportunities has the crisis created for lasting change? Well, I, I think that what we are facing in reality is almost like a, a new era. Um, we are entering um, a different um, way of seeing things, of uh, economies working, of uh, companies working, of delivering uh, their services. Uh, we already had um, local presence, uh, remote presence, but now remote gained much more importance. I almost say that we have a, a remote econ economy starting to establish. Uh, but it's not just a remote economy. There's still a, a huge need for physical presence. So I'm not a believer that everything is going to be remote from now on. Uh, the physical presence will still be there, but it's a different physical presence. Uh, right now, this physical presence uh, has a lot of scheduling, appointment. No one wants to go somewhere and just wait in the line for something. And, and that was obvious for a lot of industries, but for mine, for instance, in financial services, People uh, assumed that it was reasonable to go to a branch and wait in the line for something, and that's no longer the case. So if you had an appointment to go to a barber shop or to a physician whatsoever, you want to do an appointment to go to a financial services branch. And so this is, has changed very much. It, it has been more or less easy uh, to keep things rolling. So if you have a project going on, uh, if it's no longer done locally or physical presence is distributed, it's remote. Yes, it, it works. When you're starting a new project from scratch, it gets tougher. Uh, and especially if you are involving uh, new people that were not in the company or not, uh, they, they didn't knew themselves before, it's even tougher. Um, uh, I, I, I think right now what people are struggling more uh, is to... Um, being able to start new things, to uh, embrace creativity, creativity uh, and, and the need to people to just um, get into each other, having a coffee in the cafeteria, or we are missing that. Uh, just for curiosity, one of the things when we were talking to our colleagues uh, and they said they were missing more were the whiteboards in the walls, the places where they could write and draw something and have other people get into and, and discuss the ideas. There are about electronic alternatives to that, but the close contact is critical to uh, innovation. And, and, and that's something we are struggling with right now. And how has Fujitsu supported you during this time? Well, um, in order to answer that, I would have to briefly uh, share my beliefs in what is critical for a bank uh, to operate in this new environment. And there are three pillars, I think, they are of uttermost importance. The first one is institutional trust, uh, has to do with the, the brand. Uh, and the fact is that Bank CTT, uh, although it's a four years old bank, 
um, it has the the CTT brand, which is the Portugal Post Office brand, uh, behind it, and and it's uh, the the oldest company still operating in Portugal, 500 years old company. So that brings a lot of trust to our brand, and that's very relevant for a financial uh, institution. Uh, the second pillar has to do with regulatory excellence. Uh, to work in, in the financial services uh, industry, uh, regulations are naturally heavy, uh, and instead of uh, uh, having them as uh, a liability, we have to uh, take advantage of it and, and make them uh, working uh, on our side, on the side of our customers. So it's critical also to be excellent in terms of um, dealing with all these uh, regulatory uh, requests that uh, we have. The third one has to do with customer experience. And, and this is mainly where uh, Fujitsu has been helping us. Um, the industry still is struggling to get a better customer experience to its customers. Uh, uh, again, the, the situation we have been experiencing the last couple of months uh, made this even uh, more critical. And that's typically the area where, from day one, since the day uh, the bank started, Fujitsu has been working with us uh, side by side and helping us in several projects. And in terms of your vision for the future, can you reimagine your organization's future? Yes, I think I can. Again, uh, predicting future is becoming more and more difficult. Uh, uh, the, the need for the adaptability is very high, more than uh, actually... Uh, and betting on the future is being able to adapt to it. But uh, in order to answer that, I think I would have also to give a little bit more details of what is unique regarding uh, our bank, what, what makes us a different uh, bank. And uh, again, um, the fact that we have a, a strong brand is quite unique um, with a, a very strong physical local presence uh, everywhere in Portugal. And, and we think this is critical. Uh, again, uh, other thing that is critical for us is to have very few and simple products. And we are betting on simplicity as something that is unique uh, of Bank City. And um, most of the our, our offerings, our products are based on partnerships. So we don't want to we don't want to be a traditional bank where everything is done inside our offices. So we have partnerships and we. Uh, distribute a lot of products uh, from our partners and we don't have a proprietary distribution network so we are uh, using uh, again uh, the physical channels of uh, CTT the postal office in Portugal um, and this gives us a lot of flexibility um, and this is key uh, for us so picking on these three major differentiators the brand uh, the fact of having simple and, uh, and, and few products based on partnerships and having a not a proprietary distribution network, we are more and more an experienced uh, um, player. We want to deliver the best experience to our customers, the best products, uh, and we realize it's no longer the, 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 the rate or, or uh, the product itself that creates relationship with the customer. What really creates relationship with the customer is it's the ability to deliver. Uh, we have to be able to deliver to, 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 to reach the expectations of our customers, which are each time higher and higher and higher. So uh, in, in the way I see the future, in order to uh, get to this point, I see the need for IT and operations to work hand in hand and, and much more integrated. Until now, they have been like two different arenas inside a company like a financial services company, a bank, the guys from the IT, the guys from operations. And, and really, I think that they have to work uh, side by side uh, and uh, help themselves and, and with a much stronger uh, integration. And how do you see the work-life shift evolving in the next year for your people and your customers? Well, um, I, I really think that... Uh, what we've been doing in the last couple of months was not remote working in the traditional sense or the way people that are coming from the IT, like myself, uh, thought uh, about remote working. It was much worse than that in the sense that everyone was at home, competing for bandwidth at home with the kids, with your wife. So it, it was probably the worst experiment we could have 
in order to test uh, remote working. So at the beginning, to be honest, I was afraid that, well, this will not go well, and then and, and, and ev eventually everyone will think that remote work won't work. Um, amazingly, I would say that uh, it went much better than everyone was expecting. So uh, uh, people adapt a lot to uh, this way of working. But to be honest, I, I also think that the jury is still out on what, where are things heading. Uh, everyone is going to be working remotely from now on. I don't think so. Uh, I, I think we are uh, facing a future where it's going to be more like an hybrid model. Uh, people working at home, but also people working in the office and, and changing from time to time. Because again, there's no other alternative to create and maintain culture, to uh, induce new people that come to the company. So I'm not a fundamentalist in seeing that oh, now people uh, uh, will always want to do everything remotely or the customers will do everything online. It's not going to be like that. So I'm much more uh, a believer in a hybrid model where, again, uh, the digital part of it will be stronger. And, and to be honest, eventually the COVID was uh, the, the major digital transformation uh, as, force we've been seeing around for the last couple of years and, and it ended up helping uh, accelerating these trends um, but it's going to be hybrid I, I'm not a believer that everything is going to be done remotely or this change will be so huge again people will uh, use more digital um, to do things they're going to do it remotely and if the moment they want to go physical and they're still going to go physical they would expect to book an appointment and to be served at the time and the place on their choice and not the other way around. And I think that's probably the major difference. Okay, and what one change will you be making personally as a result of the experiences of 2020? I, I think it's becoming clear that uh, as a company, uh, the quest is a quest for relevance, to be more relevant in uh, our customers' life. Uh, and um, it, it's not just being marginal better it's not longer enough you have to be more meaningful uh, in people's lives so um in my role uh, to help the bank uh, achieve uh, that positioning of becoming more relevant more meaningful to our customers and um, myself as a, a cio i need to go from a trusted uh, operator to a business co-creator and again this is expected from CIOs, I think, all over the world. But most of the time, um, it's the hygienic function of keep the, the business running, and make sure everything goes smoothly. That is the, 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 the critical uh, aspect where we are evaluated, where we are uh, feeling appreciated. And, and that has to be there. So you cannot forget that but you need to get much more involved uh, in what I would call uh, this idea of business co-creation. So uh, having said that, if I think the company needs to become more relevant, I think my role needs to become even more relevant inside the company. Um, be believing in this idea of merging IT and operations and the importance of doing that, uh, I would guess that uh, uh, my challenge would be to become uh, a, a chief experience officer in the sense of bringing everything together and go after the attrition, the, the moments of pain for our customers and make sure that their experience is fantastic uh, and make sure that uh, in, by that they become uh, a very strong relation with the bank and the brand that it's beyond the bank. Thanks very much for your time today. You're welcome.